Okay guys, you guys are going to get to sit in on one of our protection sessions. This is Arthur. He's being trained as an executive protection dog here at Shield K9. He's actually from our breeding program. He's about 10 months, 9, 10 months old. Um, and uh, what we're doing now is we're teaching him defense of the handler. So you're going to see a lot of different things happening. I'll try to talk you through some of it. I know a lot of people are going to ask, why is there a prong collar around the dog's belly? And you know what? That's a secret. You've got to train with me to find out. come to the handler's side, stay next to the handler, and protect the handler from the bad guy. And then when he's doing well, I as the handler, I'm gonna send him to bite the bad guy, and the bad guy is Dylan. So, we're gonna start, we're gonna put Arthur close to the bad guy, sit. Now, Arthur knows what a sleeve is, obviously, so right now we're practicing with the sleeve, really obvious for the dog. And I'm gonna give him the act, no, not yet. There you act, sit. There you see, he kind of preempted. I'm not going to let him preempt. He has to wait for the command. And again, I don't want preempting. I know he knows what's going to happen. 
But preempting doesn't help this training process. The dog has to wait, wiggle that sleeve. So the decoy is going to wiggle the sleeve, make a little more attention, kiss your teeth at him. <laughs> Get a little bit intense on the dog and 
try to push him a little bit mentally so that he reacts by biting harder. So, for now, out. Lots. Lots. Good. That's it. So for now, we're going to end the session. Um, we can see a couple things that we need to work on. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to keep working this until it becomes a little bit cleaner. Add the e-collar. I really like this exercise even for people say, oh, it's just a sport kind of thing, the defense of the handler. I actually like this exercise for real work too because a lot of handlers struggle with their dog dealing with arousal, especially if the dog is anticipating a bite next to them. You see a lot of handlers get bit with the, just trying to hold their dog back. I'm talking like police canine handlers. They get bit just trying to hold their dog back when the dog is anticipating a bite, whether they're stacked up on a door, whether they're behind the behind police car, you know, doing their warnings, whatever it is that they're doing, you see a lot of them struggle with the dog when the dog is anticipating a bite next to them. And this prepares a dog for that, where the dog can be in drive and can be anticipating a bite next to the handler and still not be dangerous to the handler. And it actually gives you the ability to light the dog up right next to you without worrying about that redirect happening. And this is not, this is just part of the process. There's a whole bunch of stuff we do before this to prepare the dog for this part. If you just slap a prong collar around your dog's belly and one on his neck and start trying to do it, you're gonna get bit if it's a super strong, intense dog. Or if it's not, he's just gonna fall apart and not wanna participate at all. So there is, there's a sequence of things that we do to get the dog to this place. And also, there's a certain level of quality that you need in a dog for him to be able to do this. Not only quality in terms of hardness of the dog, but also stability of temperament. If you've got a real unstable guy and you do this, it's gonna be a little bit of a, a, a journey, you know, and it's, and it's gonna be always maybe a little bit dangerous for you. And I know everybody's like, oh, my dog can't do that. He's too, he's too real. He's too, it's probably not, you know, he's probably just not properly trained. But anyways, that's my opinion. Have a good one.